Hey everybody, yes you would expect me to be standing beside a Jeep here on TFL Off-Road, but this week we have a pretty special Jeep in our hands. Let me show you. This monster right here is the 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. Yes, this Grand Cherokee has a Hellcat under the hood making 707 horsepower. So in this video, I want to show you all around this thing. We'll look at all the specs, I'll show you the interior, and then of course we'll go over the price and talk about whether or not it's worth it and what this thing actually competes with. So first of all, we have to start with the engine, right? That's what makes this thing so special. So under that hood, it's a 6.2 liter V8 making 707 horsepower and 645 pound-feet of torque. And you know what? Let's start this video off by starting her up. So let's go ahead and pop the hood. There we go. And we'll go take a look at this monster. And guys, I have to tell you, the supercharger wine that comes out of this thing is just amazing. And there it is, the heart of the beast. Not only is this thing powerful, it looks cool too. And I mean, that blower right up on top is just huge. Very cool powertrain. And you know what, guys? I can even start it up. I'll do it from the remote control key because I want to show you this key. This is the Hellcat red key. When you buy a vehicle with a Hellcat engine, you get a red key and a black key. Now, the red key means you're getting access to full power. You're getting all 707 horsepower. Whereas if you use the black key, you're only getting about 500 horsepower. Now, maybe you have kids or you have someone who's a novice driver. You don't want them to get all that power. Well, you can give them the black key. But if you want all the horsepower, you got to go with this red key. So let's go ahead now and start her up. Oh no, it might not start with the hood open. Well, we just learned something new today. A track hawk will not start when the hood is open when you're outside the truck. Well, that's just upsetting. We'll have to climb in and start it ourselves. Old school. All right, guys, here we go. Starting her up. Hello. And let's see what you guys can hear from inside this SUV. Of course, it's limited right there at 4,000 RPM. So it does sound pretty cool, but it definitely could sound better. However, when you're running down the road, it sounds plenty mean. I mean, heck, just listen to this thing idle. And now I can also show you, yes, you get a quad exhaust, hell yeah. Even just sitting here at idle, the Trackhawk sounds absolutely mean. Well, we'll shut her off for now. No point burning up all that gas because as you might expect, this is definitely a thirsty SUV. So let's start going over some of the other specs. And right now we'll talk fuel economy. So the EPA rates the Trackhawk at 11 miles per gallon in the city, 17 on the highway for a combined 13 miles per gallon. And one of the reasons why the fuel economy is really so bad is because this thing is full-time four-wheel drive. There's always power going to all four wheels. And that just means, of course, that it takes that much more power to drive it. Plus, it's so much power going to all four wheels. What's interesting is the way this Grand Cherokee will split power. So if you put it into auto mode, you're going to get a 40-60 front to rear split. If you put it in snow mode, you get perfect 50-50. If you put it in tow haul mode, it goes 60-40. Then if you put it in sport mode, it's basically rear wheel drive at 35-65. And then finally track mode goes 30-70. So this thing really can split where it is sending the power to. And that's just gonna make it uh, more formidable in the snow and then even better when you're actually racing with it. So now let's get a closer look in on these Brembo brakes. The brakes on this are massive and this probably goes without saying, but this is the largest set of brakes you can get on any Grand Cherokee right from the dealership. 
Up front here, you're looking at six piston Brembos with nearly 16 inch rotors. These are massive stoppers. And then if we walk around to the back, back here you get four piston calipers and almost 14 inch rotors. So yes, seriously big brakes on this Grand Cherokee because with all that power, you gotta stop. Now you guys might have also noticed, not only are these large tires, but here on our Grand Cherokee, we actually have a set of Pirelli winter tires. You can see it right there. Now, as you can also see, the roads here are actually quite dry. We still have snow in the fields and that ugly snow in the ditch, but uh, the roads are totally dry. So we won't really be doing too much snow testing because it's all melted, but still it's a cold temperature, which means uh, you need winters. Winters are good anywhere below seven degrees Celsius, and it's only about two degrees right now. So I appreciate that having those winters. And that kind of brings us to the point of this track hawk. So I would wager that there is no other vehicle on the market with so much power that would be so good off-road. I mean, when you're looking at vehicles with over 700 horsepower, you're talking about Porsches and Ferraris and Lamborghinis, not Jeeps. So the fact that this thing has so much power uh, and it's still four-wheel drive capable makes it, like I said, probably the world's most powerful off-roader. Now, what are the off-road numbers? Well, kudos to Jeep. They do publish all the numbers. Of course, they're not excellent. Excellent, and they're the worst of the Grand Cherokee family. Ground clearance here is 8.1 inches. You do get a bunch of ground effects and a splitter up front, so of course it just makes your ground clearance that much worse. And that also kills your approach and departure. Approach angle here is 18 degrees. Departure angle out back is 23.1 degrees, which actually isn't too bad. I don't think the departure really changes all that much from stock. And then the breakover is 18 point four degrees so like i said not the best off-roader um, in terms of the numbers but for in terms of an off-roader with 700 horsepower this thing's actually pretty dang good and then guys there's another really respectable thing about the track hawk that's its tow rating so you can see there is a hitch it's uh, underneath this plastic piece right here it pops right off to reveal that hitch but if you hook up a trailer to the track hawk you can tow 7,200 pounds. Kudos to Jeep for really offering a performance package, but with some really legitimate utility numbers. Now let's go ahead and talking about utility and just open it up and check out some of the other features. So of course you get a power lift gate, pretty decent amount of storage space back here. I've just got my camera bag in here right now. And you do get a 12 volt back here in the rear as well couple little clips for hooking on grocery bags or whatever else you might be putting back here and of course there is a floor section so let's see what's under the floor oh there is your full-size spare and a little bit of storage on either side of it always appreciate having extra storage like that now what about the back seat well this is a fairly big SUV however the back seat is not huge it could definitely use a few more inches of leg room uh, to keep up with the competition. And that actually brings me to another point. The Grand Cherokee is getting pretty old. Uh, as it sits right here, this redesign came out in 2011. So the vehicles it's competing against, you know, the Explorer, um, some of the vehicles from Kia and Hyundai, they've all been updated, but this thing has not. So what you're looking at here is 38.6 inches of second row leg room. Uh, not a horrible number, but like I said, I think honestly that could be made better. And then down there in the middle, you do get USB ports and a proper 12 volt outlet. I do like that. And finally, let's hop up and take a look at the front seat. So making it unique, you do get unique floor mats. You get those sill plates. Uh, you get nice stitching in the seats. And then the seats themselves, I mean, look at these things, heavily bolstered seats to make sure that they're gonna grab you when you're tearing around corners out there with this monster. So now let's climb in. Another nice touch here, you do get uh, carbon fiber there in the dash. I don't know if it's fake or it's real. It certainly looks pretty real and I'm okay with it. Besides that, everything's pretty much black on black. You do get this one nice silver tray down here. Uh, but now let's fire it up and I can show you around all of the different drive features here because there are quite a few of them. So down here, you have first of all the shift lever, which Jeep has redesigned. It's no longer that weird little push lever. Uh, it's a proper shift lever. 
put it down into drive, back up into park, just like that. And then over here, we have all the fun stuff. So first of all, yes, there is launch control and we will be using it, no doubt about that. And then let me block the sun here. Over here you have the drive mode button and the custom button. So here are all the different drive modes. You have track, sport, auto, snow, and then tow mode. Now if you wanna see specifically what happens when you change it, well, watch this screen in the middle. This is telling me what mode we're in and then it's telling you all the different specific settings for each one of the systems. So we can go back now, snow mode, you can see it changes. The paddle shifters come back on, stability's on full, you get the 50-50 split of power, and then the suspension and the steering's on street. Go to auto, it's all about street, and then the paddle shifters are on. This is your most comfortable everyday driving setting. Sport mode's gonna make things more aggressive. It stiffens up the suspension. This is active suspension here, guys. They're Bilstein active dampers. So yes, you can stiffen up the suspension and really make this thing grip in the corners. And then of course, track mode. And then if now you're asking, well, can you customize it? Of course you can. You can go over to custom. You can set it up with whatever set setup you want, which is a really, really cool thing. And you can even see here, there's different launch control settings. You can set up a shift light to tell you exactly when to shift using those paddles. Um, yeah, guys, there's so many cool settings here in this Trackhawk. Here is the custom setup. So we can have the transmission and track, but the stability on street. I don't know why you do that. It would just hold shifts and then the stability control would totally kick in. But anyways, it allows you to do whatever you want. Even if it's a stupid setup, Jeep allows you to do that. It's cool to have all of those customized drive modes. No doubt about that. Then there's also just the Uconnect infotainment system. Really solid system. Works great, works fast, looks really good. Um, Jeep has done an excellent job of keeping this interior up with the times. Now I mentioned it's old. It could probably use an update, but in terms of the technology in here, it's excellent. And then in terms of the powertrain technology, it's even better. So uh, yeah, it's old, but it's easy to forget how old this thing is based on just how good it is. Now let's go ahead and talk pricing. So I'm gonna shut it off and hop out and we're gonna go over the build sheet here because of course this Grand Cherokee does not come cheap. So let's throw down the build sheet and take a look. So guys, like I always gotta remind you, these are Canadian prices. So here we go, Trackhawk, base price in Canada, 113,745. So this thing is not coming cheap. There's all your details right there. And the standard equipment list is long. You're getting lane departure warning, all of the electronic safety suite. Uh, there's a ton of stuff, guys, that comes totally standard when you go for a Trackhawk, as it should. This thing's already expensive enough. Now, on our model, we have the trailer tow group. We have the rear DVD players. Um, we also have the leather group, um, the audio package, the red seat belts cost us 95 bucks, and then that massive sunroof. So a bunch of uh, kind of superfluous options, things that just make it look nicer, but nothing that makes it faster. Bringing our total up to 133, $735,000 Canadian. This is not a cheap SUV, guys. But when you look at the competition, the biggest being from Mercedes-Benz, but also from BMW and Audi, any of those German performance SUVs will be a lot more than this Jeep. And then if you talk about the cars that have the same amount of power, those Lamborghinis and Ferraris that I was mention mentioning, yeah, it's not even a competition. So in that vein, this Jeep actually ends up looking like a decent bargain. I know it's hard to believe 130 grand could be a bargain, but it is. Especially now when you consider that in the United States, this thing starts at just over $86,000. So at that price point, it's even more of a bargain. Uh, I cannot wait to go drive this thing. So guys, that's it for this walk around video. I just wanted to really give you a good sense for this Jeep, um, but really soon I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna drive it all over the place. I will show you launch mode. I will show you the fuel economy on a fuel economy run. And then we'll actually maybe go find some snow and hey, maybe we'll even go find some mud and see how this thing performs. So that's it for this one. Like I said, make sure you go below, hit like, hit subscribe, and then come back to the channel for the full Trackhawk review. And and we'll keep on bringing you the latest news, views, and real-world reviews. See ya.